It's here. Let's see how long it takes to build it. The Prusa Research original Prusa i3 Mark III kit is the most hyped 3D printer of this year. I ordered mine at the very end of December and I've been waiting a few months for it to arrive. Luckily this week it arrived ahead of an Easter long weekend. Now there's already a lot of builds for this printer on YouTube, but I'm hoping there's two things that'll be of value. The first is that I'm going to do a speed build. I'm going to set up a timer and see just how fast I can make it. Because of this, it's likely I will make some mistakes, so be nice in the comments. Secondly, the release of this printer was a little bit rocky. There's a lot of people who are unhappy in the Facebook groups and forums because some of the bugs weren't ironed out and some of the features promised weren't implemented yet. I would hope by this time of year when I update the firmware that all of those problems will be gone and it will prove the product is as good as everyone says it is. Anyways, enough talk, time to take over one of the family tables. So apparently I've got to clean up all of this before I can even start. Mm, that doesn't count. All right, let's begin the build. I have, of course, the printer. I've got a range of different tools and screwdrivers here. I have no idea what's gonna be in the box. And most importantly, I have a timer. So this is gonna count up. You'll be able to see it in the time lapse. And I will start it after I've unboxed everything, which I'm gonna do now. Okay, we have a very thick instruction manual. And from everything I've heard, this thing is really thorough and amazing. So if I pay attention, I should get everything right. However, since I'm trying to rush this and time myself, there's a good chance I'm gonna get something wrong. We'll see what happens. Timer is officially started. You should be able to see it in the corner of the time lapse. Let's do this. One of the ways I'm planning to speed this up is by using a drill, a cell of Allen key where I can. Got it on low torque, I've got the clutch on the lowest setting I can. So once it starts to get too tight, that should lock. And then I've got this set of hex key heads. So if there's something that needs a lot of winding, instead of doing it by hand and taking forever, hopefully this will get me most of the way and then I'll tighten it by hand to finish. Now before you start posting hate in the comments, I am following the instructions. I'm only using the drill to get them close to tight. Then I'm doing it diagonally as the instructions suggest. So I'm following it to the letter. My first section done. So far the quality of the kit is amazing. This thing looks pretty thin when you're looking at it online, but seeing it in the flesh, it's actually really nice thick anodized or powder coated aluminium. I'm really happy with the quality so far. I'm up to the bit where I need to check if it's flat and on this table it's definitely not. I've got a duck next door to the kitchen bench with my hex key and I will make adjustments there. Maybe I don't even need to because this table is definitely not flat and it's going to throw everything out. So that was about five minutes, I think well spent. I don't think the kitchen bench was very level either, so I took it to where the printer will be sitting when it's in operation and there it's pretty good. It's actually a little bit better here too, so time to proceed. Mini crisis, the camera I'm filming on now decided to beep and carry on, so I've lost a couple of minutes with that. Build time is up to 46 minutes. So far, nothing has gone wrong. I think I'm pretty close to finishing the Y-axis assembly. So I'm gonna keep on pushing through. Apparently this section is really crucial. I need to make sure I have the bearings orientated the right way and that I don't over tighten them. I'm gonna use a separate tool to turn these nylock nuts because I know from experience they're a real pain in the bum to do otherwise, but I am gonna leave them loose as their instructions tell me to do because I don't wanna crush them. 
which is telling me what the problem will be if I do it too tight. I'm up to what I expect to be a really satisfying bit and that is pushing the linear rods down into the 3D printed plastic parts that hold them in place. Should have a nice satisfying click. Here we go. Well, that's okay, I guess I expected a little bit more, but the important thing is everything seems to be aligned and move in really well. Step 38, Waxus is done. Great job. Open the bag with a Haribo gummy bears and treat yourself with a few. I've actually been eating them all along, so I guess I'll have to slow down a little bit after this one. I've sorted a small issue with children and I'm ready to begin chapter three, X-axis assembly. Let's go. It's always nice when something goes together and actually resembles the finished product. So this X-axis carriage looks just like that. I had to pay close attention to the linear bearings to make sure the little races of balls on the inside are rotated 45 degrees from each other. Good attention to detail from the instructions. So earlier on there was an optional step where I had to insert a screw if the hole was present in my part, which it was, and that's put me short a couple of parts. So I'm not sure if I've done something wrong here, but that put me short one of the 18 mil long M3 screws for attaching the stepper motor. And it's also put me short one of the square nuts that I meant to slip into this next piece. So I've rated the spare parts to get what I need, but hopefully I'll work out later on what exactly is going on here. So here's my x-axis done. Everything has gone smoothly apart from those missing parts. Nothing yet in the instructions to explain that. I'd love to know, considering this is a 3D printed part, how they got this texture on top of this part, which is B6, which I'm guessing is what the extruder sits on. New to me. I'm now up to chapter four, the z-axis. And when I first opened the instructions, there was an update sheet for chapter four, step 18. So I'm going to flick forward in the instruction booklet and put it in the right place so I can't accidentally forget it when I get to that part. So I'm right on the two hour mark and we're up to a pretty big step, I think. We're about to join up the X carriage to the Y stepper motors. Just had my first really fiddly bit and that was inserting the trapped nut into the end of the X carriage pieces, but with some pliers and a little bit of patience, I got there. So everything seems to be going perfectly well so far. I'm gonna push on through. be getting the belts parallel for the x-axis but it's a little bit difficult to see what I'm doing. Seems to be okay. I think I'll always be able to adjust it later on so I'm going to proceed as is. So the x-axis carriage is in place on top of the Z assembly and I get to skip a whole bunch of pages now because there's an updated design which I have so now the manual is covering the old design so I don't need to worry about that. That also explains that mystery screw from before. It's to help tension the belt so you're not pulling it by hand as you tighten. You can simply wind it in, it'll force itself away and then you can tighten it to tension the belt. So I think that's a good improvement. 222 into the build and I'm on to the extruder assembly. There's a lot of hardware in this, but I think it'll be the main component left apart from maybe the wiring. So let's see how quick we can get it done. 
As a side note, I've just figured out how they get that texture on the part. It's simply the bed where it touches. So they've obviously got a textured bed and as it prints up from that, it squishes it in and that leaves that effect. I just went to get a ruler to double check the length of one of the screws because there's quite a few different sizes in here. And then I noticed on the instructions, everything is printed out on a sticker to scale. So it's that small attention to detail that makes the quality of a product like this so, so good and so much better than some of the other offerings. Just assembled and aligned the internal parts of the extruder. I think I've got it aligned pretty well. It's one very small hex screw that holds on the part to the end of the stepper motor. So it's hard to get it comfortably tight. So you're confident with it without worrying about damaging the thread. So I suppose I can disassemble and tighten it later, but hopefully I've got it right first time around. So I just had my first error and it was a really simple one and it's not really affecting anything at all. What I needed to do was to move the X carriage down before I tried to screw on the extruder because it was too high where I needed to access it was in line with the frame. So I put in the bolt not going through the carriage. Therefore it hit the end and dislodged things from my hand but I've double checked the instructions, I've moved it down manually and I should be able to screw it together like I was meant to in the first place. I've just finished what I consider to be the trickiest part of the build so far, and that is attaching the extruder to the X carriage. Now these cables need to be routed through these little channels, and it was hard to juggle everything and kind of understand what I needed to do until I'd already made a mistake, and then I loosened it off, routed them correctly, did it up. At first I thought there was a problem with the kit, but with a kit this well thought out, if something doesn't seem right, it's probably you that's made the mistake. So you double check the instructions, look closely, and hopefully you can work out what you've done wrong. Well, that bit was harrowing. After carefully feeding through all of the wires through the back of the X carriage, there's this three millimeter nylon filament, and you've got to thread it through the middle of them and pierce it through a hole in one of the 3D printed parts. I assume this is gonna support all of the cables with some sort of shielding to let them flex and so they can't get tangled, but I needed an extra light to be able to see what I was doing, and I really didn't wanna get that bit wrong. As I put on the cable wrap to tidy up all the wiring on the back of the machine, I am noting that it is exactly four hours in. Just over four hours in and I finished what the manual describes as the hardest part of the assembly and that is the extruder. It is very intricate. All the cables are routed really well. I really hope I don't have a failure at some stage because it's gonna take a long time to pull it apart and to fix everything. But for now, doing well, on to the LCD. So the LCD is complete and that was a really easy step. At the end of that section it says there's different wraps for the heat bed, either a wraparound one or a textile one and you're meant to go to a section of the manual depending on which one you have. So which one do you go to when you've got both? That's what I'm stuck with now so I'll flick through the manual and see if I can work it out.
I've just used the pliers to put through all of the little spacer washers underneath the heated bed. It could have been disastrous because some of them are directly above the 30 by 30 extrusion and it would have been a horrible job trying to get them back out if they fell in there. But fortunately, I didn't drop any and I can continue tightening them down in the order as it says in the manual. Well, everything continues to go really well. I'm on to chapter eight, which is the absolute last chapter, and that is the electronics. Build time so far, four hours, 46 minutes and counting. I better get on with it. I've just finished wiring up the electronics. That bit took a little while. All I've got left is the filament holder and I've got one gummy bear left, so I'm saving it for when I finish the printer completely. With this spool holder, the printer is completely assembled, so I'm gonna treat myself to the last gummy bear. The pre-flight check was really quick, I'm glad to say. So I'm calling this one done at five hours 49. I've no idea whether that's fast or whether that's slow, but the exciting part is now I get to turn on the printer for the first time. So as you can see, I've set up my printer in place. It's much later in the day. In fact, it's the night time. The kids are in bed and now I can play with it a little bit more. All I've done since finishing the build is going through all of the calibration tests and that was pretty straightforward. Now any questions I had were covered in the manual and there was one that I was too lazy to look up so I jumped onto their website and I got into the live chat and someone very friendly despite it being Good Friday on Easter answered my question within a couple of minutes. I was extremely appreciative. Great parts, great instructions, great service. For me that's what justifies the price of this printer. I mean it's not an expensive printer, it just seems like it is because of all the cheap clones available these days. The next steps for me are going to be updating the firmware to the newest one. I've checked on the LCD panel and it's very close to the most up-to-date version, but I'm going to do it anyway just to be thorough. Unfortunately for me, I might have a very high-tech 3D printer, but my internet connection is very low-tech. It's going to take hours to download the latest driver package. What will my first print be? Well, you have to wait for part two to find out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you then. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.